All right, so to start this, how about you explain what this building was and why we we're starting here? So when we started this season, we spawned somewhere around this area and we decided that this was the best area to build our starter house. And then what happened was we pretty much built the main floor and then stopped there and didn't build the rest of it. But eventually later on, it got completed. Yep, that pretty much sums it up. And if I recall, this interior is still full of a few starter things we had. Like, look at this. This could have been the first wooden pickaxe in Season 8. I guess, according to what the sign says out there, this is Fulton Manor. Yeah, I'm guessing I put that there to create some lore or something. And you'll see the word Fulton a lot. It was actually created by Thief, I think. And not much on the second floor. I kind of just wanted to get it done. But it does have that nice McDonald's double M arch design on the roof. Do we want to check out my floating island since it's pretty much one of the other earliest things we did? Yeah. I, for some reason, just wanted to build a floating island base. So I built the floating island, made the water stream that goes all the way up. It's pretty much the only way to get out, uh, get up without an elytra. And I decided to test my skill with building a tree and then kind of this shack right here. And you can actually go inside the tree where there's more of a base inside the oh. island itself. Uh-oh, crosswalker. Oh, well, but oh. down here, there's not, it's pretty much just a bunch of empty barrels and chests. I tried to do an interior. It's quite nice. And then the exit is over here where you just drop down. I gotta say, for the start of the season, this is pretty good. Season eight wasn't as crazy as like six was, but it was picking up steam after a little bit of lukewarmness that happened in Season 7. Do we want to check out kind of the Fulton Town area? Yeah, we'll do it somewhat chronological, but also kind of just going with what's close by. So here is the main town area that I guess I sort of started. I definitely didn't come up with the name, but I remember I built this house, which originally didn't have a deck or like all sorts of fancy stuff like that. But this was just my starter house, and it's pretty much where I lived the entire season. We should go to your setup. <laughs> yeah, so just like season four, I didn't have an actual house. I just lived in the outdoors with all my chests. It is kind of a shame you didn't have a house because many of your builds this season were very nice. In fact, we should probably get along and see if we can find one. Uh, I'm trying to think, did you build anything in Main Fulton? Oh, here we go. So in this town, we actually did like a bit of caring about stuff in terms of building buildings for things like an enchanting table. So Thief did this, and it looks really good. Alright, so then next up, I guess, because it's close by, is Babby's Tooth, I believe is what we called it. Like many buildings I do sometimes, it just expanded, so it started with this wooden area. Then I built a blackstone, or whatever this is, basalt and glass thing, and it always had frogs in it. Then I decided to just make it huge, and it goes all the way out here. And as you can see, it's filled with frogs, and there used to be a whole lot more, but... I would have to kill them a lot to make sure lag didn't get too bad. And as we're out here, we can kind of see the wall out here because our main town area, we kind of went back to the season one idea where we pretty much walled everything in. Mm -hmm. This season's wall was a bit more uniform though. Thankfully I didn't just use random blocks. <laughs> now this was a small tunnel that I started. I don't know if it goes anywhere really. All right, next, I think we'll just finish off the rest of what is in this part of Fulton Town. So this was the voting booth, which originally we kept on fire, and we had some kind of game rule to keep the fire safe so that it wouldn't burn it, but then we turned that off at some point, and it just destroyed it. So that was a shame, but at least some of it's still here. We'll get to see the calculator later. I mentioned the block shop earlier, but here it is. Um, I didn't really sell much from here. <laughs> Tadpoles to hurt. <laughs> I liked the deep slate selling that was helpful for me and we'll figure out why eventually hmm. but i also had my own shop which i guess a creeper blew up here it was kind of a nether shop it served as a portal to the nether and a place where i sold a bunch of nether items yeah and this shop actually did well because i love to stimulate the economy through here and this is um ched the cheese's house yeah this is Pro Fox guy's abode for this season. This is the car boat garage, or as he called it, the coat. Not a terrible interior. I do like the yeah. table and chairs <laughs> and the shower. Oh, wait. Oh. Oh, secret, secret tunnel. I've never been in here. 
I, I guess this is the the coat, the car boat. I it's think legendary. I might have helped him gather some of the materials for this, but I'm pretty sure he built it pretty much all himself. There's a second floor, which has a bit of a story, because I believe what I remember is you can go inside and look at all the signs. So pretty much Bubby Bloxon, who's Gubby, died once. And I guess this was kind of made as like a memorial. Yeah, we all mourn his death. And before he died, he said, I found mob spawner, but he didn't exactly spell it right. Oh. <laughs> this is a mini game that I made. It's kind of similar to the one from season four where you it's a three-part one, so you would start by having a bow and shooting at all the buttons so that you can move up. And then the next section is a maze with a bunch of doors. Oh. Whoever would beat the maze would have to do this parkour to get to the end. It's a lot easier when you have the bows to be able to activate all the buttons. Because oh, the God. idea was that you would go different ways and then... You would try to, uns to like, uh, stop the other person, put blocks oh. in their way and whatnot. But I believe the end goal you the you wanted to kind of get to this block over here, make the jump over here, and then jump down here, and then it says you have won, you have won, you have won. <laughs> oh, I guess we had another redstone tower this season. I forgot about that. And we had Mega Torch Tonga. Yes, the futuristic building I built that I was very disappointed with until I decided, what if I made it a torch? And then it was actually okay. And here's the one fault in tree. I'm pretty sure Kapo Samurai had another highway. Yep. I remember this place well. Okay, so this season, of course, again, we had villagers, but because there weren't any nearby villages, we sort of had to make a portal to get the villagers. Um, well, at least accessible. I think we actually managed to connect them through the ocean there. But anyway, we found this village, and so we decided we could just make a colony here, sort of. So we set up walls, and we made a little <laughs> lightning-catching thing. Then this was the town hall, where my friend Comic Relic was, like, in charge. <laughs> I don't think we ever did anything from here, though. <laughs> then there was also a villager breeder area in here. It's not very good, <laughs> considering there's only two beds. <laughs> there was an unfinished building I was working on right there. I don't even know what I was doing. I just made a box, I guess. And there's a few buildings over here which were made by me, including this one, this one, and that one. This one I was kind of proud of because I had never done a roof like this before. And I also hid some alias in here, I think. They might have escaped though, so can't be sure. Oh, there they are, yeah. And then there's also an exit that brings you onto a little path. And there isn't much to note along the path. It's kind of just sparse and then there's like little bridges and all sorts of things. So you can kind of fly around it. Up there, there's a tree that's just a little campsite where I ended my season. And down here is a place that I believe I called Camp Kit. Oh no, Camp Keto, okay. And this was the last place I set my spawn, I think, before I quit. And going this way, there is a random village. And that's where we died to end the season. And then right over there, there's something that we'll, we will get to a bit later. Yep. But it's kind of funny that it's right next to all of this. I know, it's actually somewhat connected. It's kind of nice. While I'm flying there, I'm just going to quickly show off something that isn't really of much note. This is an area I built called Old Fulton. It was kind of just for lore, and the idea that like people had to escape from here, so it got abandoned. But nothing much to note, because it's just torn down building things. And a few castles. The castles are nice. I guess we have these shops over here, which I believe Compo Samurai made. This... Uh... Yeah, I'm at a loss for words. <laughs> First is the library, which has a few books in it. I guess by tradition we'll just page through them so people can read them if they want. So it's a bunch of stuff about Fulton's history. Uh, 
and in the back of it, there's a little tunnel that takes you outside of town. Then there's a few more residential houses I made. I was kind of working on doing slightly better woodwork instead of just normal box houses. And I think some of them came out okay. Now this was a comic relic build. He made a subway. It doesn't really go anywhere, but the aesthetic is very nice. I guess this is where we got bee-related stuff this season. Not the best setup, but <laughs> I guess it worked for what we needed. This is another spare house. I'm not sure how I feel about the deep slate roof. This was just for more beds because I wanted more villagers. And these two, I believe, are identical houses. <laughs> yeah. I guess I just liked this one and built another. And then the one last one there, which has a stone foundation, and it's a little uneven, so that's cool. But now, we can get on to some good builds. <laughs> this is pretty much the first thing that was made in East Fulton, and it was I pretty much made this huge foundation, and I had some interesting plans. I don't, I can't exactly remember what they were, but I started off by building this house. I never ended up living in it. Doesn't look that bad. I actually did a full interior, which is surprising for me. And then I made this kind of like factory kind of building. And this is where we kept all of the villagers we wanted to trade with. Not the worst system for villager trading, if I remember. It actually worked pretty well. If I remember correctly, the plan was to add another layer. And that's why there was a staircase going up. Yeah, but we never did that, as I didn't even finish the first layer. I guess while we're here, we can sort of check out your big tower. This is sort of Fulton related. I think I kind of wanted to make the castle ruin over there, but kind of better. I don't exactly remember my reasons, but I kind of just made this massive stone ball and then put something inside of it, put a window, and then you could go inside the mountain. It's got a pretty nice view of Fulton Town though. And I will say that interior actually looks pretty cool with how I did the shroom lights. Yeah, I like the depth. We have that big, silly, up-in-the-sky minecart system, which was not used very often and was kind of a waste of logs, but it's there. You want to lead us to Atlantis? Yep, I believe this minecart system should take us there. So this was the small railway that we used to get to Atlantis. <laughs> Specifically if I fell off because it's not very easy to get back on Atlantis. There are a few levers that take you to different places Which is not the best system for minecart just because it's hard to hit them. Oh, nope. <laughs> here we are This right here is Atlantis Square It's my idea of what a futuristic city in Gurgle Squad would be like with the help of a thief who built um, This beautiful building the casino Yeah <laughs> Aquaquilio Bogo Fungi Nosy. Aquadogmo Fish Fungi Nosy. Oh. Where'd the machine go? Did you remove it? I I think I removed it because it didn't work very well and we only used it once. Oh. So not much of a casino anymore. Kind of a shame, but there was one machine that was like sort of roulette because it was just a dispenser. All right, I'll just go through a few buildings. This one was a small one. Originally, I wanted it to be an elytra shop, but then I realized not many people need to buy elytras, and I don't have stock to sell. So it kind of just became a cool-looking thing. This is Gigatorch Tonga, which was originally just a landmark, but then it became a cool storage thing. And there's a lot of axolotls in here. You'll see why later. Oh, also, more axolotls, because this wasn't enough, I guess. Over here is a little villager silo. And this one was a villager workstation silo. I say silo, but I only ever used the bottom floor because it was just too cumbersome to get stuff to the top. This one was originally supposed to be my mega base. I remember I drew a sketch of it in math class once, and I was thinking like, oh cool, this is where I can live. Then I built it and was like, oh, well this looks okay. And I never really did anything with it, except that there's a sign you can see from up here where it says, in the future, graffiti graffiti is made on oak wood signs good job if you found this by the way i don't know if you ever saw that did you i think i did when i came exploring here one time okay and this building which i was quite proud of because it took a lot of trial and error is the spiraling uh president mayor leader office place compo samurai was supposed to be in charge so this would be his desk and it's 
I'm decently proud of this because the swirl actually came out right, I think. And now this is one of the first buildings I built here. Actually, probably is the first, which is the H Hotel. It has both a dark side and a good side, which had something to do with... Oh, yeah, it was the humble and non-humble. That's what it was. So we're in the non-humble side. So I, I guess I should explain. So something about us being humble happened this season, and that's what caused me to make this skin, because I'm just so humble. I have all these cool things, and obviously I'm the most humble person on the server. Didn't all start because I wore bling to the presidential election thing that we had? I think it was something like that. And of course, there's a little thing right here to connect the two. I remember the white one didn't really have as much in it, but I think each room still had its interior done, so... Good job, 2022 Extra Stuff TV. Your work is being appreciated. And then going on to the last few important buildings, this one is the Iron Golem Farm, which was a terrible idea. The farm barely fits in here, and the golems just spawn outside anyway, so it doesn't really work. It does mean that the town, uh, or the city, I guess, is relatively safe, because you always got these guys, but they were very annoying to kill. There's a few aquariums over here. This one is um, a turtle one, and the other one just has, like, two fish in it. <laughs> and lastly is this big, huge, like, A-plot house that was supposed to be some kind of mansion, I guess? And I never really finished it in terms of stuff being on the inside, but there is interior, and I think it turned out okay. I do like how it looks. It almost hurts to look at from the inside, and overall, I am very proud of Atlantis because we finally did our idea of a futuristic city, which had been somewhat postponed since season six. And also, I do like the water wall that I added. I was worried it would cause too much lag, but it's cool, and you can run across it to make it go away. When you look at the map, it really does look like a calculator with all the buildings being buttons and the big top part up there being a screen. And it's all in a big box too. Oh, and this is the movie theater where I guess I wrote, Our Destruction is Certain from the mayor. And these are just some blue axolotls which I spent a lot of time breeding this season. Again. At some point in the season, I, I don't know, probably it was just offline, and I was just in, in a creative world trying to cook up some ideas for what I wanted to build, and eventually I made up this thing where it was just like a collapsing bridge with a train running off of it, and I think I sent like a screenshot of it in, in the Discord, maybe, mm. and then I eventually built it on the server. It was a lot of work trying to figure out how to make it look like the train track was actually kind of falling down then over here we have this small town i think it was the idea was it, it was going to be for pro fox guy to rule over and compo samurai was making a mod where he made a bunch of colored woods and i was going to use like the gray wood planks for that for the floor but since we don't have mods running we don't have floors <laughs> yep and i mean doesn't make this place all that much worse because it's not that great to begin with. Yeah, I will say this project did get abandoned rather quickly if I remember. I do like the style of these two buildings, and this one's pretty good too, but it is kind of just a brick block. Okay, do we want to go across the ocean to the library and all that? Yeah, let's go. And then when we come back, we can hit um, XCOM, and then in the same direction, we can hit the ending spot. So that should work. Look at that. Here's the library. Pretty massive project for me. The chandeliers don't look that bad. My favorite part has always been the window though. I love it. But with this whole library design, I kind of just winged it. So that's why as it gets higher, it just kind of gets a bit more confusing. Like I added in a big brick section and then I had to make a sandstone part leading up to it and then the roof it was very complicated but I think it looks really cool I would agree you can even fly out of it through here now unfortunately all the other stuff around here isn't quite as nice I still really like the bridge though oh no oh did I, did I do this or was this you also uh the big brick with the pit in the ground that's yeah. me okay but this boat, the boat on the other hand, looks alright. Yeah, it's got some shape to it. 
I wonder if there's anything underneath. Oh. Oh, it goes deep. Mm -hmm. Not a whole lot to note about this place. I wanted it to be like the next cool town, but then right after making the library and the bridge, I made whatever shape this was, and then I kind of just gave up just building these with all the lanterns hanging above. Yeah, I also remember that you proposed that I would like also join in this at some point, and I didn't do that, which, you know, that also kind of kills a project when... You know, it's just you working on it. Yeah. Okay. Do we want to see Big Tower? Yes. It's pretty much straight from here. Okay. And once we... Oh. Oh, yeah. That's way closer than I remember. Yeah. So, there's a lot to unpack with this. At some point, kind of mid-season for this, I just decided... I came all the way out here, saw this big mountain, and I was like, wouldn't it be cool if I built something up here? And then I built this massive ring, starting with the main first layer, which is kind of like a prison for some reason. I don't know what I was going for here, but you can kind of just run around endlessly here if you want to do that. Now, it was annoying having to, well, I, I mean, I didn't have to, but I did build all these prison cells. It was annoying having to get all the iron doors and all the levers and everything for this. Yeah, but I gotta say, having all those doors there adds a cool sense of scale to this. I mean, this would really be like a full prison. And then there's some staircases in the corners that lead up to the next layer, which, I mean, is pretty empty. And... From this point, you can't really go up that much more. You can see everything up here. Now, we could look at the ring around the edge, because that was kind of added near the end, along with these floating islands. That's why they weren't completed, because it was at the end, and I... I don't know, I must have not had enough stuff, and I didn't want to make two more floating islands. But I really like the ring around this. Up here, on top of the grass part, is kind of the second section of this, where I didn't really know what to do, so I just built whatever I wanted, and, I mean, it doesn't look that bad. Yeah, this still looks cool. <laughs> it's always nice just going on the very top and just looking down, because you can't see the, the ground from here. Wow. So this was, I'd say this is one, well, at least it's one of my favorite parts of season eight, even though it wasn't really completed. Even so, I mean, just the scale of this. <laughs> Always nice when I come back to look at it. Going back to what I said pretty early on with how I appreciated the deep slate part of your blog shop, this is what I used most of the deep slate for. Is it time to move on to XCOM and that stuff? I guess so. Uh, hold on, I'll wait for you to get here. Ah, there you are. I built my interpretation of Castle Grayskull from He-Man. And yet again, I made another Axenfilio Mago Funginosi guy. But I made him look like He-Man. Yeah, because Or he tried has, my best. He has a 10-pack. <laughs> This is also very nice. I feel like I say this about all your builds, but they're just always good. XCOM, then. So this was a collaborative project between me and Comic Relic, where we just wanted to make a big evil business, sort of. And you said the XCOM was based off of the bad guys in Tron, which I think you said were called NCOM. So I helped him build some of the building, and we made a logo. And then down here, next to his house, which this is where he lived for most of the season, just all tucked away here. He had a few entrances. One of them is behind a portal, and the other one is underneath that end rod. The portal one, I believe, takes you to the villager thing immediately. And this is the main one, which can get you all the way to the top. Or, well, the last four that we bothered working on. Oh, come on. And of course, there's like an office and some blue X-Lottles in here. 
and you can see below there's the villagers and then one of the main things of XCOM that took up a lot of time was Project Catacombs. This is a giant tunnel where we dug out most of the mountain and made it so that the villagers could fall through here and then from this control panel area you could decide to let a villager fall. And when this light was on that meant that there was a villager ready to go. And here there is. So click the button and there he goes. <laughs> And then I believe we can follow him right down here. Oh, that actually almost worked. If only there was a torch there. Then he gets pushed along through this tunnel, and down here there's a waterway so people can follow him. Then he goes up through here. And then as he heads up to the surface, he goes through a little area that like pokes out. So that's what this building is. And <laughs> I guess a creeper made an entrance to it, so that's kind of nice. And then from here, that tunnel would take them all the way to Fulton Town, which we don't really need to see, but you can kind of just get it by hearing it. I guess let's check this out. Yeah. It might as well, since we're here. This is another building that kind of got ruined by the fact that we don't have the mods anymore. So this was my big base plan. So the original idea was all the floors would be made out of these like smooth obsidian brick blocks, but eventually the mods stopped working for me and so i wasn't able to complete my base so i had to just give up on it and it was a shame because it was actually doing pretty well and i do like that glass effect there well it doesn't look that bad just if i was able to actually complete it yeah it would have been nice but now we kind of know better that gurgle squad and mods are not the most compatible things so now here is the skeleton spawner that we turned into a mob farm. This is how we were able to afford all the bone meal and white dye we needed for XCOM. A lot of time was spent just sitting here waiting for the skeletons to go through and then killing them, getting a bunch of XP. Right. Is it time to check out the end of season thing? Yep. So I built it up on the hill and it's just this massive oak structure. Originally, I didn't have a plan for it, but once we get into it, we'll see that there, I eventually formed a plan. I don't remember what the original idea was. I don't know if I really want to fill in the walls, but it probably would have looked a lot worse if I did. So I think it's better that it's just this open area. And I have another one of those glass effect things with a beacon at the bottom. Yeah, I agree with you that the walls do look better open concept. It is nice that you did decorate the front wall, though. You know, back here is where we have the incredible redstone of me. It's a lever. Incredible. And then you drop here. So this is Business Gurgle's Amazing Babby's Youth sequel. Young, outstanding, unbelievable, terrific, and honorable. And this is supposed to be an my sequel to Babby's Youth from Season 6, and I did that by spelling out Babby's Youth with all of the words. I don't actually remember. Uh, I'm pretty sure I named it. His name is Babby's Youth. So, uh -huh. we have a horse, a pink sheep, which I just found naturally roaming around, and I named it King John because I wanted to get a llama to be King John from Season 6, but I could only do a pink sheep. That was the best I could work with. Oh, it's Freddy the Second. And we have from Freddy the one. Second. A <laughs> couple of cool items over here: a trident, a bucket of dotty back, zombie head, dragon egg, dragon skull, nautilus shell, and tadpole bucket. The skeleton horse that I just stole from you. I feel like I named this a villager, villager, well, a good villager, villager back at season four. You did. I believe that was the top one. So very creative on my part. I would say a lot of the season doesn't quite feel as organized and streamlined as season 6, but it feels like an improvement from season 7. And there's areas like um, Atlantis that I am genuinely impressed with that we were managed to pull off in the time, and they're they're just very refined and it's nice. Fulton is a bit messy, but it does have some nice builds. And your mega builds this season have been insane. <laughs> I mean, this and the tower, it's a pretty good season. Yeah, so... When we got through Season 8, and we were just about to start Season 9, 
if you would have asked me, I probably would have said Season 8 was the best season we did, just because, I guess, pretty much everything you said, all the stuff I did was pretty crazy. And I just liked kind of the whole vibe of everything that we made. Fulton Town was a really nice area, and we also had other nice places like Atlantis, and then the whole... I mean, it's hard to say that XCOM was like a storyline, but I liked what it brought to the season. Kind of like mystery, ooh, spooky, evil business and whatnot. This is still one of my favorite seasons. It's crazy that we talked so highly about this when it might have not even happened if you didn't overlook something. This is the original season 8. We first started doing this one acting as if it would be canon season 8 and we did a lot in like the first couple of weeks at the end of that two week cycle you had left the whitelist off so two griefers managed to log on and destroyed everything now what was funny about it was i was somewhere over here by a sheep farm when it happened and i was just afk because i had actually like left my house and then i came back and i was dead and Oh, it was right over here. And so, yeah. Everything was griefed, the house was burned down, the castle was blown up. And at that point, we were like, let's make a new season 8. And so we did that. And we never looked back, and it was a good idea. But we're here now. And we did go in creative mode and just mess ar messed around. Which is why things aren't quite as destroyed as you would expect them to be. You can tell that the house is still burnt down, but this house as a whole is the size it was before it was burnt down, which was kind of a crazy project for us to take on. If I recall, you pretty much built the entirety of the first floor. I just supplied some wood. The deluxe den here survived the fire. Pretty much. The idea of this house was that it would be a bunch of different rooms that would be like shops all around the side and then we would have rooms kind of on the inside. And so I guess we have the deluxe den as part of that. Also this over here, Iron Baron, of course. And then I believe you were planning something for the second floor. Yes, Bobby Land, a little amusement park that went the way of the dino. <laughs> I don't think a single block up here that was part of Bobby Land survived. There is this though. This was supposed to be part of Bobby Land. The big uh, cobblestone thing goes underground. But I didn't do anything with it because we got griefed. Another thing about this area in general is a massive project that we were doing. So if you kind of fly around, you can see that this is almost an island so what we wanted to do was get rid of every single tree and this whole place was pretty much forest and now almost all of the trees are gone i forgot about that but yeah you're right that was one of our early goals that's how we were able to get enough wood to actually build the house but i'd say let's just look at a couple of the things we have lying around here I guess we had a wall of deaths, which is pretty interesting. This was my island for farming, cooking, and this was villagers, but they got killed in the fire. Oh, yeah, this was made by Comic Relic after the griefing. Okay, Okay, I'm, I'm going to turn my sounds off, because that's difficult to hear. So, well, I guess... I guess this was another place that must have been made after the griefing. This is Australia. Yeah, I think this must have been me. Yeah, I know for certain this was you. Okay, I'm going to die just so that I can be back. And I guess when you die, the place you spawn is all the way up on top of a pillar where we have the lightning rod. Yeah, this is kind of sad. We actually tried <laughs> to prevent the house burning down, but... Someone else did it for us. I would assume this other location is something that Kidonius was doing. And this I remember pretty well. Just kind of a dog fruit, I guess, 
people named Jeffrey and Chuf. So then he made these boats. I think these are based off of things he made out of like, they do look pretty cool. They're very unique. I would agree with that. One thing I do know is the horse parkour over here. That's something I do want to take a look at. Oh, and then I guess there, I must have had a horse shop inside the house before it got burnt down. It did take a lot of wood. Pretty much just a bunch of platforms that you had to jump to. Another thing I saw is, I guess, something made by Gubby. It's a bit sad right over here next to the big house. My house, Bobby. I think maybe it's about time we look at the castle. Because it's got a bit of a story behind it. It would be just another castle if it wasn't for one thing that happened on the day of the griefing. These griefers... Also, that's kind of a terrible chandelier, I will say. Um... The griefers, they were talking about, like, burning all these things down and destroying stuff, and they talked about destroying this here castle, and when I was, when I came back after being gone and saw all that happened, when I relayed, like, all of the messages what, that the griefers said, I didn't remember everything, so I was like, they, they were talking about killing all the villagers and... They said, blow up the castle, and that was just so funny, because at the time, there was pretty much nothing of a castle. It was just this tunnel, and then this pathway up here, there was no tower on top, there was nothing over here. And it was like, what do you mean blow up the castle? There isn't even a castle here. And the griefers didn't actually even say blow up the castle, but that's how we remember the event. Yeah, and the Griefers didn't even have TNT. Yeah, they had like one or two pieces of TNT. Oh, yeah, I guess another... It was also funny because of how pathetic it was, the griefing that they did to the castle, because it was like maybe a couple of things were blown up, like the floor. Then after all that happened, I finished this whole mountain because I was planning to build a mountain, and then I built that, but eventually... I gave up and we moved on to Season 8. Speaking of Season 8, if you remember these chests here, this was an original idea you had for the original Season 8, where each of us would have like a specific job, and we would get a starter kit. We didn't really do that though. I believe there's a bit more over here that you kind of did, just a bit away from your island. Oh wait. Oh wait. Hold on, is this my original survival gear before we went creative? I should explain this. So I wanted to build a zoo for some reason. That's why there's the central polar bear thing. So I built like one runway and then I wanted to practice using copy and paste commands. So I did and I managed to make a cool four-way thing. And I'm quite proud of it, it actually looks okay. I think Comic Relic built this, but if I remember, I might have helped him with the sails. Okay, then I'm pretty sure I made this over here, like the catapult, and then the really, really ugly looking cannon. I will say, I don't know why you built it at an angle, but I do yeah, like the cannon I don't either. Side. I don't remember much else from this season that really is to look over. I think we might have just covered everything there is to see about this season. Yeah, it seems like it. 